as I said, we're kind of talking about uh, Asia this week and Asia finishing up this week. And Asia is the largest continent, covers the largest people groups and uh, the largest mass on the on the planet. Because if you think about it, it's talking about the, mi- the, the Middle East and the Far East and even up in parts of Russia. And so like it's a big landmass, India, some of the largest uh, populated groups of uh, on the planet are in Asia. So now uh, Thursday, brother, I was supposed to have brother Justin read the passage that he read today. I messed up and gave him 17, but that's okay because they go together. And actually this morning I preached a message on all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. I preached out of this text and it's a great follow-up to what I was talking about in uh, in Thursday. Now, I feel like I'm really beating up Asia, all the other countries. I'm like, oh, the Latin influence on the United States is just great. And all oh, the African influence on the United States. And we got to Asia and all of a sudden I started going off on, on all these things. And it's not because of anybody in Asia or because the Asian people. In fact, I preached, I think it was on Thursday, I said uh, uh, that the Asian population, the best hope that they have, it seems like, are those who are coming to the United States because they're open to the gospel and they're here? They're hearing the gospel in a lot better way than what they're hearing, you know, overseas. A lot of places it's illegal to even preach the gospel in some countries over overseas. Okay, so uh, but here's the reason I'm getting into all this is because I keep seeing the relationship between you know our relationship with the with Asia and the end times prophecy. And so I don't have time to get all into it today, but I mean tonight whatever it is, afternoon. But uh, this chapter right here, what it's talking about this mystery Babylon, great Babylon, uh, you know, I believe what we're talking about is probably, okay, most most possibly the United States. And the reason why is because we're the, we are by far the most, the leading nation, you know, in the world as far as, you know, the most money, the most powerful uh, military and all that. Now you say, well, what about China? You know, and you're and you're referencing all these, even the relationship with China and the trade and all that kind of stuff, or or what about India? You know, some of these heavily populated places and where a lot of things are made, and uh, and so I talk about that this morning uh, in in Iola. If you get a chance, you want to watch that and see my take on that. But let me just show you just a few things here that I talked about this morning that I do want to make mention of. If you look at the, because this whole chapter, right, it's about the merchants and they're going about making all the money and they're living deliciously and extravagantly. And uh, and let me just tell you a few things. So some of the things that it mentions in this chapter is like gold and silver and precious stones, right? In the, in the United States actually has like 79% of the world's reserves in gold. You know, now most of the these facts though, is going to, China is going to be like number one. Okay. Like China, uh, is down the, down the road a little bit on producing silver. Actually, Mexico is like number one on that. And the United States is only on the map because of Hawaii. So that was an interesting study. Uh, China is the world's largest producer of pearls. Doesn't seem important, but as you're reading this list, it's talking about the pearls and all this kind of stuff. China is uh, China and India are the largest producers of silk. It talks about all the different fine linens and silk and stuff like that. And China is the largest producer of even wood or wood products. That sounds kind of funny because you think Canada and you've got, uh, you know, what about Russia? What about all these other places where there's lots of wood? China actually produces the most wood, at least wood products. Okay. So they're like pressed wood and, and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, and so interesting, you see all the stuff on this list, the spices and all this kind of stuff. And you can see no doubt a trade, the United States trades with India and trades with China and trades with all this. And you say, well, you know, so who's more powerful if we're trading, we're getting all the stuff from them. Who's more powerful? Well, here's an interesting thing. As I began reading and studying this out a little bit, here's what I noticed. In the United States, men are so powerful, so rich, so like uncaring about where we get our money that here's what a lot of rich people said. You know, they can make things a lot cheaper in China, you know, so here's what we'll do. We'll set up our factory in China. We'll avoid a lot of taxes and we'll get everything cheap. We'll get super cheap labor. Right, because they're basically have slaves, like just human slaves that are doing the work out there and working for hardly anything. And so the United States is actually 
manning a lot of factories over there and owns a lot of factories over there where they're producing this stuff. And let's be honest, they're using slaves to do that. Well, look at verse... Uh, let's look at verse... Uh, yeah, no doubt they're, uh, they're slaves, but I, wh what is that? Uh, I didn't write it down. Okay, I'm going to find it. 13. You're in chapter 18, verse 13. Thank you. You already saw it. I noticed you paused when you were reading that, actually. <laughs> and I think that's why, okay? Here's what's going through this list of things. Cinnamon, odors, ointments, frankincense, wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, beasts, sheep, horses, chariots, slaves. What? What does that have to do with spices and all that? Slaves and souls of men, okay? That's part of the trade. That's part of the, the, the market out there. That's part of the industry is actually trading people. Now, I don't even want to get into that. I talked about this a little bit this morning. I, I will talk about that some in this message. But there is also another slave market that's out there that is just unbelievable when you do the research and you see some statistics, and that's the sex slave market and, uh, and sex trafficking, human trafficking, and all this stuff. And it is just it is so bizarre. Even like sometimes it's just uh, like pornography, but sometimes it's literal people. I mean, ha is, have we forgotten that a lot of influential men in the United States were on an airplane going to an island where they could, you know, be with underage women, <laughs> you know, that were basically uh, part of this sex slave trafficking? We live in a wicked world. But the thing is, hey, let's not, not make any mistake about it. The United States is right there, part of it. You say, oh, well, we don't have that so much here in the United States. Well, who do you think they're trading them to? Who do you think's doing the buying and the selling? And, uh, and they're always uncovering like these truckloads of people who have been smuggling in the United St States with that kind of, a, of, an, of an industry. And it's just crazy. Okay, so, so that was what I preached this morning, and that was on my mind. Now, this is a strange turn here, but I want you to continue with that thought. And I want to tell you about something that in my study on, on the Far East or the East, East Asia, um, another huge industry that's coming out of Asia right now, and it might surprise you, and that's called K-pop, all right? And so I might have told you uh, already that I was going to preach on this today. Uh, we're going to talk about the K-pop phenomenon. Some of you are like, what is K-pop? Well, there's K-pop and there's J-pop, <laughs> Japanese pop, Korean pop. All right, and I don't know what else is out there. C-pop? <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know if those are things, okay? But I know, I, I have heard of J-pop. But K-pop is Korean pop music, all right? Korea. Now, when I was a kid, I was in Japan, and we heard Asian people, Oriental people, trying to sing American music, and we thought it was funny, and we thought, yeah, it's kind of neat that they're trying to imitate us, but it'll never catch on. It sounds kind of silly. No, no, no. Now, they, like they do with all of our products, they've taken it, found a way to reproduce it, and they've sent it back to the United States, and the United States is buying it up. It's one of the, it is Korea, South Korea's largest, uh, I don't want to say crop, largest money-making thing right now. Their largest industry right now is K-pop. These guys are making millions, and it's like a multi-billion dollar industry in, in, in like the teens in the United States and all over the world are just eating up these, these, uh, this pop group and listening to their music and all that stuff. And I want to explain to them because if you've never been so fortunate and lucky to see pictures of them <laughs> and watch them dancing around and all that kind of stuff, uh, just don't even look it up, right? Just take my word for it. Uh, so, uh, so the world, as the world gets closer to this one world government, because this is what you're seeing, all right? You're looking around and you're seeing like leaders are just behind closed doors and they're making agreements and they're signing, you know, uh, trade agreements and, and all these kind of uh, documents and, and diplomacy and, and, they're, and they're, they're meeting together. And, and, and then we see also at the same time that the leaders are doing that, we see that cultures are just sharing with each other. And look, we've got media now. Social media is just, I mean, all over the world. Uh, I mean, we, we watched a live stream from a, a preacher in Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya, and the quality of the live stream was better than anything we've put out so far. <laughs> no, that's another story. But <laughs> yeah, it's just the point is that everybody, you know, I did a live stream, uh, a, a Zoom uh, meeting with like 20 different pastors in India. And I was like, these guys are like in huts or whatever little shacks. And they've got a cell phone and they're sitting there having a Bible study online 
somebody on the other side of the world. And I'm thinking, man, the whole world is getting smaller, isn't it? It's all coming together through the use of Internet and technology and social media. But look, there are some things, some cultural things that shouldn't be shared. Right? Some, some cultures were better off before the United States shared their culture with them. Some of our culture was better off before we picked up some cultural influences of other places. And so the idea is that the whole world is uh, sharing in those, uh, those influences. And here's why, because of that, and you know, obviously the, some of the biggest uh, moves in a culture are movies, you know, Hollywood, uh, 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 music, the music industry. These are often like the biggest, you know, as far back as you can go, um, I think I shared with you when I was in Japan in the eighties, all the Japanese just loved Michael Jackson and they were always talking about Michael Jackson and singing his songs and all that kind of stuff. And it was, it was really, really strange. And so now we're seeing actually the United States bringing these Korean <laughs> pop singers, uh, over. So here's what we can expect as the whole world, uh, increases in their depravity, right? And they, and they share their culture with each other. And all, here's some things we can, I mean, here's why we can expect it's only going to get worse. Okay. Number one, atheism and, uh, uh, or just those who would just claim to be non-religious. And again, I talked about this in Iola on, during Sunday school. I talked about the, uh, the Eastern religions and the, the beliefs, which actually aren't, so much religion in the sense of there being a God, there's kind of like ways of thought, you know, their teachings and they follow these teachings. And so most of them, if you interview them, they don't even consider themselves religious. They don't even necessarily believe in a God. They just follow all these traditions and they go to the temple because their family goes there and all that stuff. But most of them will claim to be atheist or at least non-religious. Like they don't, they don't want to claim any kind of religion. Humanistic is what they really are. Okay. And so, uh, of those in the world, now I've already made a big deal about how one third of the world claims to be Christian. All right, that's a huge percentage. In the United States, obviously, it's way bigger. But if you take the whole world, I'm including Asia in this. One out of three people in the world claims to be a Christian. We know they're not necessarily saved, but they claim to be a Christian. All right. So, of all the world that doesn't claim to be to believe in God. Asia is the biggest uh, portion of that. China, 90% of China claims to be atheist or just not have a uh, religious, you know, affili affiliation. Now, look, you, because they can say that and still claim to be Buddhist. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Because you can say, well, what? There's a per this percentage of people claim to be Buddhist. That doesn't mean they believe in God or they consider themselves to be religious. They just fall under the umbrella of Buddhism or Confucianism or whatever. Okay. Uh, Japan... In South Korea, both sit at about 60% of their population claims to be non-religious. Now, we have a missionary that's in uh, in Japan, and he's, he's said that. He's like, most people here, they just don't even claim a religion. They just don't even believe in God. He's like, it's really hard to go out and uh, preach the gospel to them. <clears throat> and, uh, and so there's actually 39% of the United States who would claim to be non religious okay so the rest of the united states is pretty much christianity there's a small percentage that's, that's some other religion but most of them would claim to be christianity whether it's catholic protestant whatever all right and so uh so 90 percent in china 60 percent in japan 60 percent in korea those are, that's a huge you know population a huge amount of their population that doesn't even claim to believe in a higher power i mean, necessarily they might believe in some higher power but not a bible no uh no morals other than just what they've been taught by Buddha. <clears throat> and uh, so this should tell us what we can expect as our cultures kind of get together and we're just picking up all these uh, lifestyles of other parts of the world. All right, so let's talk about this uh, K-pop phenomenon. I don't know when it started in the 90s or probably, I mean, you could trace like Korean pop singers back a lot farther than that, but where it really became popular, I think was in the 90s, late 90s, early uh, 2000s. And, uh, and I'll, I'll try to describe them here in a minute, but as they came on the scene, uh, they just kind of like, they just kind of exploded and, uh, they started, you know, everybody had them on their shows and everybody had Ellen Degen Degenerate, <laughs> Degen whatever it is. Yeah. Ellen Degenerate had them on their show 
And just to show how wicked she is, here's what she says. So do you guys like hook up after the after your shows? Do you kind of like hook up with some of your fans? What was she? What what would be the point of asking them that? Right. And they were uncomfortable and everything. So she asked them again, do you date people like outside? And so it's just that's the American influence. Right. But here's the thing. Do a little digging. And here's what you find out. The surprise, surprise, the K-pop phenomenon, the K-pop group, the, these ba boy bands is what they are. Okay. The girl bands too. They have girl, they have girls, K girl K-pop. I'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> but here's what they do. They have these, these, these bands and everything. And so anyway, a little bit of uncovering, all you'd have to do is quick Google search and you'll find there's been all kinds of scandals where these guys are involved in what I was talking about, early sex trafficking and, and uh, helping people to like hook up in bars and casinos and stuff like that. And it's just a wicked, wicked uh, uh, lifestyle. Now let me explain again, wh here's what they are. So one of the, for instance, one of the, the biggest bands is, see if I can remember, BTS I think is, is how it goes. And the word is a, is a Korean word, but it stands for bulletproof, Boy Scouts, basically, Bulletproof Boy Scouts. And when they explain what they stand for, it's like, you know, we are like immune to the criticism and the cultural like, uh, uh, you know, uh, projections that people put on us and all that kind of stuff. So what it is, is like reaching out to that teen, like rebellious, we want to be ourselves. I mean, like just like the Beatles of the 70s and, you know, all the, I mean, this is how it always works with the music industry and Hollywood and all that. We want to really appeal to the younger generation and, and feed their like desire to just be rebellious and all that kind of stuff. And that's actually what, what these guys are. So that group has like, I think seven of these guys who I honestly, the first time I saw a picture of them, did not know they were guys. Okay. Because here is the thing. Asians, this isn't an insult, they can't, this is just the way they're, they're born. The Asian men don't typically look very manly, right? They usually can't grow a beard or facial hair. They don't have hardly any hair on their bodies, right? That's just the way that they're born. They have really soft skin. They're usually short, kind of uh, 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 slender, and, uh, and they're natural, just like the way that they look. It, it, they have to work at being masculine, okay? And so, uh, and so you get these guys, and then they're young on top of it. So boys, you know, always look, look more, fem more eff effeminate. I'm sorry, boys, I'm not saying you're effeminate, but then manly men that are growing facial hair and got muscles and all that kind of stuff, right? So, but these guys, they play to that, all right? They go ahead and look the feminine part. They dress the feminine part. Sometimes you can't tell. Is that dude wearing like girls' clothes, or uh, what's what's the deal? Like I can't tell the colors and just the designs and all that. I can't tell. They have like long hair that's like dyed like pink or purple or whatever, and it's like super long. And they wear makeup. I mean, they just like everything about them. You're just like, is that a dude or is it a what is that? But it's a boy band, okay. Now the girl bands are a little bit different. You can tell they're girls. There's no doubt about that. In fact, they have skirts that are like up to here. <laughs> okay. And that's a big deal right now. Like all these uh, human rights people are saying, Hey, they're like sexualizing the women in Korea and all that stuff. But the thing that jumped out to me, because yes, they're doing that. Women have always kind of been sexualized. It's unfortunate. I'm not, that's another message for another day, but that's not what jumped out in my mind. What jumped out in my mind, because those look like ladies, right? What jumped out of my mind, or what about these dudes that look like ladies too? <laughs> like, like very effeminate men, okay? And so let me tell you about just three things real quickly that this uh, subject, this K-pop uh, phenomenon, just kind of like just right out the bat jumped out, at, out to me and then just kind of like tie that all in with what I was saying. Okay, number one is that the young boys and girls are used as sex symbols, okay? Now, interestingly enough, among the young population in Asia, um, the, the, uh, the amount of people who are even engaged sexually, even having children, is drastically reducing, is shrinking. 
which is funny. Remember a time when China, you, you, everybody heard about how they were only allowing China to have like, you know, two kids or 1.5 kids or something like that. And they weren't allowed, like you, you'd get in trouble. Uh, I don't know if find or, or what, if you, if you had more children than that, but that they were enforcing that because they said, Hey, it's overpopulated. We got to like stop the growth. Well, now they're having the opposite problem and they're trying to figure out, and, and, and Japan was the first place that really suffered with this. Now it's Korea, South Korea, and, uh, and uh, China and all these places. Okay, what's going on is the younger generation, they're not going out there and finding partners. You know what I mean? Like, like opposite sex partners. They're just staying home, playing video games, you know, enjoying their media, enjoying their online socializing. You know, there's this, uh, there's, there's, there's advertisement out there from Japan. I came across this again. I was reading a, an article and it showed this advertisement and this advertisement, there's this young businessman and he's getting ready to go to work. And when he wakes up, there's this lady, uh, uh, animated lady. How many are familiar with anime? You know what anime is again? Okay. I'm, I'm going to get so far off my notes. It's not even funny. Okay. When I first came to I, now, I grew up in, like I said, I grew up in Japan. I knew anime way before it even made its way to the United States. I knew what anime was. I remember reading, I guess they call it manga, right, which is like cartoons or, you know, for adults, actually. I remember going to a ba to an off-base uh, restaurant in Japan, and we sat down, and while we're waiting on our food, because it took them a long time, it wasn't like fast food, you had to wait for them to cook it, and they had all these re all this reading material over there, and so I saw comic books, and I said, oh, great, comic books, and I was flipping through it, and it was vile and disgusting, okay, because because that, that was just, hey, this is adult reading material, but it was manga. Well, anyway, somehow it made its way to the United States, surprise, surprise, very popular among children, okay, but here's what you notice about anime characters, it's hard to tell. Are those guys or are they girls? <laughs> they have the long hair. They have all the things like I just described about the K-pop band. That's what the anime characters are. And it took off among our young generation. I think it's still super popular. And a lot of kids drawing, uh, you know, anime characters and they're watching all the things. And, and, uh, and uh, here's, here's the thing though. Um, you know, when I, like I said, whenever I was younger, I already saw some of that. But whenever I came uh, to first start working with teens in Iola, I had no idea that it was big. I had, it was popular here. And like all these kids are drawing like, uh, you know, anime and I'm thinking, Hey, that's pretty cool. You know, you got the long hair. Like, Hey, I remember that guy. That was, uh, uh, you know, uh, Dragon Ball Z. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you know, Dragon Ball Z. And I was like, I have no idea. Like I didn't know you knew who that was. I saw that in Japan. So then they're like talking about this. Well, here's the weird thing that happened in Iola. I started seeing all these teens that were like metro sex, like you can't tell, is it a boy, is it a girl, is it a, what's, what's going on? And sure enough, there was this explosion in the high schools, probably still is, but I'm not working with teens that much anymore, probably an explosion still of people who are just confused about their gender. And in the United States, there's just the whole like push to like just accept people who don't know what gender they are and accept people who boys don't want to be girls and girls don't want to be boys and just, it's okay, just let them do that. And I saw that in the teen department and I saw girls that didn't want to be called a girl's name. They want to be called a boy's name. And I'm like, what is going on in Iola, right? In the Bible Belt, in the, in the you know, suburbs? That wouldn't be suburbs. What would that be called? Rural Kansas, right? And I was just like, what's going on? Kids drawing uh, uh, My Little Pony. I guess, I don't know if that's anime or not, but they're like drawing My Little Pony. I'm like, I th girls draw My Little Pony. What do you got there? My Little Pony with rainbows and all this stuff. Because it had become popular for men to be effeminate. Okay, and the Bible talks about that. And, uh, and it mentions that as a sin, actually, that men would be effeminate. And then for the industries, okay, look, you look at the, industry, the, the music industries in the United States, it certainly isn't any better, okay? But what we keep finding over and over is in the music industry, they're taking these young kids and they're sexualizing them. They're presenting them to the world as sex symbols. They're doing who knows what, you know, behind scenes. you got a lot of them coming out and saying, uh, you know, things happen to them whenever they were kids. Look at Joel 3, verse 3. Uh oh. I 
forgot what I was looking for. Joel. Look at chapter 3, and it says, For behold, in those days, this is prophetic, talking about future time, and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, uh, for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land, and they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they may drink. You see this just corrupt, just like, you know, who cares? Take the boy, take the girl, give me my wine. Give me. Look, it's so sick, but our whole world is kind of turning into that. And there's been sick times in our past, I know, where, where that kind of stuff's gone on from the beginning of time. Look at Sodom and Gomorrah. But here we see in our nation people just throwing their kids away for money and throwing and just using the kids uh, as sex symbols so that they can get whatever they want. And I, I, I don't know if I mentioned this here yet, uh, but, and I mentioned this this morning, that I was told that one out of four prostitutes started out when they were 11 years old. Now look, 11-year-old just doesn't decide that they want to do that. Somebody's got to push them into that, right? And so kids at super young ages are being taught this kind of stuff, and, uh, and, it, and it's, it's, just, it's just ridiculous. And don't get me started on the, uh, the age of consent, okay? Well, here, here, so here we go. I just mentioned kids going into prostitution at 11 years old, okay? The age of consent, everybody in here over, over 12 probably knows what I'm talking about. The age of consent, guess what? Some countries, it's 12 years old. Now, they can't drive till they're 18. They can't do this and they can't do that till they're 18. They can't buy a car. They can't do that. But they have a right to make a decision if they want to be with somebody sexually. No, they don't. That's just wicked people making laws so that they can, they could, you know, do wicked things. Right. And so, uh, and so the, they have lowered in a lot of places. And for, and for example, in Japan, now the, apparently the laws are, are kind of confusing there. They, they do have some restrictions, but in Japan, it's 12 years old. I think in China, it's, it's like maybe 13 or 12. And so like in all these places, the age of consent is lower. And here's the deal. They'll flat out say this. So since the age of consent is that low, if somebody is caught, you know, in the sex traffic ring or, or they're caught, you know, being raped or whatever, if they can willfully go file a complaint, the government just overlooks it because, yeah, it's, there's nothing we can do. We can't enforce it. This age of consent, they didn't complain, right? So little kids being treated that way, <clears throat> we, got a, we got a wicked world, and it's all just, hey, the United States isn't better than anybody else. In fact, the United States is, is, is very guilty in not only receiving that from other countries, but promoting that all over the world and promoting homosexuality, and promoting uh, transvestites, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, number, uh, but uh, how about, go to 1 Timothy 6. You say, what is the, how, how does people get, how do people get that wicked? Well, we could go to, we could go to Romans 1. We might just do that. Every opportunity. <laughs> But uh, 1 Timothy 6. 1 Timothy 6. The Bible's falling apart. And look at verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. South Korea sees, oh man, we've got, we're making millions and millions, yay, billions on this industry. Let's just sell it. Hey, what to get us more views, more sales? Let's dress them like that. Let's tell them that they have to do that. Let's engage them in this. And so now you have these kids making, these kids are making like $50 million a year or, or something like that. What do you think they're going to do with all that money? 
They're going to want to go out and spend it, and they're going to get, sure enough, they're getting addicted to gambling. They're getting addicted to uh, pornography. They're getting addicted to, because they have unlimited resources. And, 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 and anytime somebody has a lot of money, you know what that leads to? They want more money. They're addicted to the, the fame and the notoriety they have from having all that money. They end up doing drugs and sex and trying to seek that feel-good uh, experience. And, uh, and it's all based on the love of money. Okay, so we talked about boys and girls as sex symbols. Number two, I, br- I briefly mentioned this already, but effeminate men. Okay, and I'm, I talked about how the population is decreasing in East Asia, and uh, and I don't think I ever finished that, illu- that 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 ad. Okay, so that ad showed this guy waking up, and there's this uh, this anime. That's how I got off. <laughs> All right, I made a full circle. So uh, they had this anime character in this little box or something like that. I don't know what it was, and it's like hello, wake up. It's all in Japanese. Okay. And then there's subtitles. It's like, wake up. And he wakes up and she's like, it's going to rain today. Make sure you take your umbrella. And he's talking to this like animated, like figure, like it's his girlfriend. And he goes off in the day and he's going to work and he keeps getting texts from this animated, this artificial intelligence, right? Is, is like sending him a text saying, Hey, I miss you. Hurry home and all this stuff. And at the end of the day, he's in bed and he's like, it's so good to have a friend and have somebody that's with me all day. And it's animated. It's like not even real. All right. But see video games and entertainment and all this stuff is actually bringing a lot of even the United States uh, children into the situation where they are just It's all just about entertainment and they don't really need to go out and get a job. They don't really need to go get a girlfriend. You know, government's giving them money. They're living with mom and dad and they can, you know, fulfill their, their, whatever desires that they have right there online on the computer. And, uh, it's a terrible situation. So here's the thing. The Bible's very clear on this. And I would say in our, in the day in which we live now more than ever, Men need to try to look like men. Women need to try to look like women. Okay? You say, well, I can't help it. I can't grow facial hair. I, I just naturally have a slender body. I just naturally have. Well, then you can do things to, to emphasize the masculine parts. Right? You can do things to de-emphasize the femi- your feminine qualities. Does that make sense to anybody? You know, if you can grow a beard, grow a beard. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I forgot to shave, man. I did that just for this sermon. <laughs> if you, do something if you don't look masculine, you know, but for goodness sakes, cut your hair if you're a dude, right? Don't try to look like a woman. If you're a woman, go ahead and have long hair. The Bible says it's a glory unto a woman who to have long hair. And unto a man, it's a shame. Let's look at that. First Corinthians 11. In case you don't believe that's in there. 1 Corinthians 11, look at verse 14. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. Now look, you, you really don't have to argue like, oh wait, what about Samson? Or what about, you know, uh, or is it really a sin if I have long hair? Or, you don't have to worry about any of that. Look, I just read that and say this. Oh, a guy should be ashamed if he has long hair. Amen. A woman should be ashamed if she has short hair. That's why ladies with cancer and they lose their hair and they're just like devastated. They got to get a long wig or something like that because they, they their hair is their glory, right? Now, if they, they can't help that if they lost their hair or some women, you know, different things will happen. Maybe they'll go bald for some reason. Uh, it, but, but it should be natural that a woman wants to have longer hair and a man wants to have shorter hair. Look at Deuteronomy 22.5. This verse is never popular, but Deuteronomy 22.5. Amidst all these commands God's given to the children of Israel uh, to let them know what he considers right and wrong, what he considers to be abomination uh, or not. Uh, And he mentions this. He says, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, if you're a Christian, you love the Lord, you ought to just say, oh, well, if anything pertains to, if you're a woman, anything that pertains to a man, I don't want to wear that. If you're a a man, anything that pertains to a woman, I don't want to wear that. This K-pop band, I don't know if I ever saw any guys with dresses on, but 
they had like the flowery, you know, uh, collars and like, uh, uh, what do you, what, what, not flowery, what am I talking about? Like, uh, they just, <laughs> everything they had was just like, like that should be like, that should be like a woman. Like they bought that from the women's department, right? Like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? When you already kind of look feminine, you know, and then you're growing your hair out and all that. Well, I tell you why, because they are super popular among the growing you know, an increasingly popular LGBT community. And, you know, all these people just love this K-pop band. You know, I hate to say this. Kim Jong-un, who I mean, you know who, who, who that guy is, okay? Not South Korea. He's in North Korea, right? Kim Jong-un recently put a ban on skinny jeans. <laughs> Like kidding. So if a guy wears skinny jeans, you're going to get a big old fine, <laughs> maybe thrown in jail or something like that. No skinny jeans. Mullets. I don't know why he picked a mullet. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why he picked mullets. Like maybe that's a thing over there right now. Uh, I am seeing more kids, more guys wearing uh, mullets. Rather. Kim Jong-un said, if you wear a mullet, you're a disgrace and we're banning that. Guess what else he banned? He banned K-pop. He said K-pop is a spreading cancer. And he said it's destroying our young people. And they're, now, look, there's some, I'm definitely not a supporter of Kim Jong-un. <laughs> okay, he's a wicked guy. Uh, in fact, uh, if, if you are caught listening to K-pop, if I understood right, you could receive the death penalty. Like, that's how serious he's pushing that. And uh, he does not like, the the maybe liberty that's growing in south uh korea and it's spreading up to north korea and he's like we got to put a stop to this so there's all this underground like you know listening to jump drives with the k-pop on it and stuff like that so he's like no we're gonna put a stop to this you know if you get caught with that death penalty i mean i think it's that severe and so look i'm not and i'm not advocating that i'm not saying he's a good guy or anything like that but i'm just saying here's what he realized that if we allow this just rampant, you know, just live how you want to live. Who cares if the boys want to be girls and the girls want to be boys? Who cares if they, you know, uh, uh, are just being sexualized and all this kind of stuff? Let kids be kids. Isn't that what everyone says? Oh, let them get, it's just a phase. Let them go through it. Well, yeah, that kind of thinking has got us to where we are in the United States right now and in the world right now. Okay. And I hate to give Kim Jong-un any credit, but you know what? He's actually saying, hey, we got a problem. And in uh, and last Thursday, I mentioned how Japan just recently said, hey, we've got a problem. We've got to limit how much time our kids can spend online because they're being affected by this and it's bringing them into this, this moral depravity. So some people in the world are waking up. Meanwhile, the United States is like, no, we just got to be loud and proud and go spread it around the whole world and all this stuff. And look, it's just we're getting to a point where our country is just getting more and more wicked and we're going to end up right into this revelation 18 time which we know is coming it's already been predicted in the bible so we shouldn't be surprised so the last thing would be uh not just effeminate men but gender gender blending i guess is the idea but like i said it's interesting though that the girl bands you don't see a whole lot of the girls dressing up like guys because you know the majority of the population wouldn't wouldn't go for that and it is pretty interesting how uh, how that goes. But anyway, like I said, that's another message for another day. Well, let's look back at Revelation 18. Let me try to close this thing out. Chapter 18, look at verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Now, I mentioned this morning that who's he talking about my people? It's kind of tricky because when you look at the chronology of what's going on, you know, God's people, I believe, have already been persecuted and, you know, the Antichrist already has set himself up to be God. And so God's people have actually been taken out in the rapture. And, uh, and what we have right here now is actually the, 
the plagues being poured out upon the people. And so there's a couple ways to think that. I think it's probably, maybe he's referring to like the 144,000 that are still on the earth preaching the gospel and all that. Or maybe this is just a general idea saying, you know, my people need to come out of that. But whatever the case, we can make that application for ourselves because we're already Christians and we already are part of the kingdom of God. And we know that we're not of this world. This is just, we're just passing through. We're pilgrims here. And so here's what we need to do is we need to realize that we need to come out from among this wicked world and we need to be separate from this wicked world and we need to not be part of their sins so that we're not going to experience part of the plagues that come out upon the wickedness of the world, okay? Now, the, uh, the, uh, the good thing to remember here, I want to close with this idea, is that, you know, none of these things, you know, if, if somebody has, has struggled with pornography or maybe a fem, being effeminate or, uh, you know, maybe there's a couple things on this list that we could talk about, greedy, covetous, or whatever, you know, those aren't the things, it's not, it's not doing those things that makes a person, you know, go to hell or receive that kind of plague, because that's the ultimate punishment is death and hell for all eternity. But what, what saves a person from that has nothing to do with our righteousness. Praise God for that. And the whole world, like this, being corrupted by all this, all this wickedness and the, teen, you know, God bless the teens today. Uh, they're, you know, I know every generation has their difficulties, right? But they're, but they're bombarded with so much garbage and so much pressure. And uh, we need to pray for our teens in this building and 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 your your children and your teens, because there's a lot of there's a lot of influence, bad influences out there upon them. We need to be wise and we need to be sharp and and try to stop them from that. But you know what? Here is the beauty of it all: that none of us in this room have to have to step one foot into the lake of fire. None of us in this room have to bear the punishment that this world deserves. And yea, we deserve it because we've all done our fair share of, of sinful things. And, uh, and none of us have to pay the price for that because Jesus Christ took that punishment and he became sin for us, died on the cross. And so what we really need to do we can get, it's going to be so easy for us to focus on this, and we need to. We need to preach against this. We need to realize the condition of our world. It can be so easy that we just, we think in terms of, hey, this world is so wicked, and I'm a Christian, I'm living for the Lord, and I'm going to separate from the world. Amen, that's good. You don't want to be at enmity with God and love the world and, and go against God. But you know what? We're missing one step right here is that all these wicked people can also come to know the Lord, and they can be forgiven of their sins. Amen. And so this is why it's so important, and this church is so set on going and preaching the gospel so that we can do, hey, before the Lord does come, we don't know how long that's going to be, okay? Uh, you know, it might only be just in the next three, four years. And before the Lord does come, you know, we've got to go out there and preach that gospel and get that spread as much as we can so that we can save these people from this filthy generation and they don't have to share in those plagues that are coming. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word and I thank you for uh, uh, this church and the, the uh, great works that are being accomplished in your name through the work of your spirit. I pray, Lord, that you will bless those efforts and you'll continue to provide, Lord, not just monetarily and physically, but provide us with, uh, with laborers and a sound mind and wisdom as we go do your work. And, and, uh, and Lord, we pray you just lead, guide, and direct your church. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.